This machine here is the power squaring shear. It's the main method that we use in this shop to cut sheet metal. Anytime you have a straight cut, straight through your piece, this is the piece, or this is the machine that you will use. This machine can cut up to 14 gauge sheet metal, which is about the thickness of a loony. But most of the stuff we cut is 16 gauge, which is thinner. Look at this machine, you'll notice that it's got equipped with a table and a long extended arms that allow you to have large pieces of sheet metal on it. This machine will cut 48 inches in width. Now, right here along the, the edge is one of the guides that we use, and it's set up for 90 degrees to the blade. That's why it's called a squaring shear. It will cut 90 degree angles to a side of the piece of your sheet metal. You'll also notice on the, on the bed here, there are or on the table here, there are some lines which indicate inches and you can easily set up and cut your piece to length using this system. Most of the times though, that what we will do is we will set up and mark out on our piece of uh, sheet metal before we cut it. In order to cut your piece properly, you need to know where the blade is. And the easiest way is to look through the front of the machine and you'll see a little space down between here. And if I slide my piece under there, you can see just the edge of the cutting edge of the blade. Now if you mark out your piece and place it along this edge, when you cut, it'll cut very accurately. So remember, always look between here to find your cutting edge. Located on the ground is a wooden foot pedal. That actuates the blade. So when you push that, when you step on it gently, the blade will come down and cut your piece and also located on the top left part of the machine is the power switch and if I push that button you'll hear the machine start up. Now before I make my cut I'm going to use some of these tools here to do the layout of where I want my cut to take place. I have a square. A square is used to check and make sure that the sides are 90 degrees to the end or vice versa. I also have a ruler, or you could use a tape measure, depending on what you want. And I also have a scriber. Uh, for this situation here, I'm going to use a felt pen, because a felt pen will be easier for you to see. But the disadvantage with a felt pen is, when I use a felt pen line along my piece, the width is quite uh, significant, and it can result in inaccuracies. So, let's say I wanted to cut a square piece right off the front here. So I'm going to use my square, set it up, and just scribe the line. Now, you can see the line right here, and what I always do is I set it up using the guide of the power square inch here, and I'm going to follow this line directly across to where the cutting edge is. So now I'm back over at the machine here. I have all my safety gear ready to go, and I'm ready to make my first cut. You can see the line that I've marked on here, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place my piece right up against the edge because I want a 90 de degree cut to the side. And then when I slide it up underneath the guard here and look down in between here, I, can, I should be able to see the line. And when I have it in place, I'm going to turn the machine on and then carefully push the foot pedal and the blade comes down and makes the cut. Now I've gone around the back of the machine and picked up the piece that was cut off. And You'll notice it's right along the line here. And I can put those back together to show you um, where it's cut. Now one thing about the power squaring shear is it doesn't remove any metal, it shears it. So there's no metal lost in the cutting of this piece. Unlike some machines, for example, saws, which actually take tiny little particles away as they cut. Now I've picked up my ruler and I've got my felt pen again. And I'm just going to offset the ruler to give you an idea of an offset line. So I've created a line that goes from one corner down about an inch and a half, and you can see that. So remember, this machine will cut directly across the piece in a straight line. Now, when, in order to cut a line that's, that's offset like this, I'm going to have to carefully look at the cutting edge of the blade between the guards and set up my piece. 
So here's my piece ready to go. I've got my layout line on there indicating the felt pen and the cut line. I'm just going to turn it so that it's almost flush. I'm going to slide it through and then I'm going to come underneath here and I'm going to look for that line. There we go. So you can see the line there. I'm going to slide it right up to the edge and you can see that on both sides. Okay, now I'm ready to cut my piece. So I'm going to turn the machine on and when it comes up to full speed, I'm going to press the foot pedal and take the cut. There's the power. I'm going to do the final check, make sure it hasn't moved. And there goes the blade. Now I'm around the back side of the machine where the blade is. And I wanted to show you this just so you can uh, understand the safety considerations for this machine. This blade runs a full length and it's unguarded on the back side. There's the bottom blade right there and you can just see the top one above there. No one should operate this machine uh, when there's people behind close to the area where the blade uh, moves because if they get caught in that blade or get a finger caught in there it will cut it off. So we have to be extremely careful. Now on the back side of the machine we also will find a little chute and this chute, this chute guides all the scrap little pieces onto the floor below the machine and what we want to do is make sure that we gather the big pieces. These other ones are small and they'll go in the garbage but a, a big piece like this might be handy for practicing welding. All the other larger pieces in this will get recycled. And located near the power squaring shear is a tote which has a whole bunch of small pieces in it. These pieces are waiting for you to recycle them so if you need a piece that uh, is small look here first rather than cutting a big piece. Now I'm back at the back of the machine again because I want to show you this guide that exists here so that someone can make repeated cuts to an accurate length. So let's say for example I wanted to cut a piece um, that was a half an inch long. This is what I can do. You'll notice I'm going to turn this handle here and you'll see this blade uh, guide come move closer to the blade. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set it up on this there's a little hand wheel here that I can use to make the adjustment and there's a little gauge right here and you'll notice there's a half inch right there. So I've set the machine for a half inch. Now if I look carefully where, the, where this guide is gone you'll notice that it's approximately a half an inch away from the edge of the blade. So when I slide my piece up through the underneath the guard, it's going to hit against this guide and um, be exactly one half inch sticking out. Now that I've set my gauge, I need to tighten this handle so that the, the gauge doesn't move. And there's one on the other side too. Now I'm ready to take my cuts. Now here's some strips and I'm going to cut one half inch off the end now that my machine is set up. So I'm going to place it up against the edge, slide it up, you'll hear how it goes through a thump and it won't go any farther. That's the piece of metal now resting up against the, the gauge. Now here we go. We make our first cut. Slide it forward again. Slide it forward again. And you can see you can make repeated cuts for as long as you have a piece of metal to cut. Pretty convenient for making uh, multiple pieces in the same size or dimension. And here's some pieces that I cut off. They're all one half inch wide uh, and they're all identical in size. So here we go. And the last thing you need to do when you're finished using the machine is to put the pieces away that are surplus to your needs. We're going to recycle these ones in the proper location. They can all go back into the recycle box.